Hey everyone, this is Finance Course Guru again. I'm going to show you something today that will really, really help uh, trying to figure out mortgage payments or loan payments. This can be for a car or a home or a business, whatever it might be. But I'm going to show you a lot of substance really quickly. So here's how you use this. Watch the video without typing anything. Just give me three minutes to explain this to you. You can watch the video. I'll give you a little bit of background. What I would then do is try to use the formulas and the techniques that I'm going to show you to recreate a spreadsheet. The amortization schedule really can be a pretty automated process, and Excel will do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. Uh, if you just let me show you how to do it and uh, take the time to kind of recreate what I'm showing you, I think you'll have a pretty good template as to figuring out payments. So let's just go ahead. The first thing I like to do is to organize my amortization schedule. Now, I'm really going to only look at the first five payments here um, or the first five periods. Uh, you can drag this down as far as you want to see all 360 payments of a mortgage if you want to. But we've got this loan data over here that we're going to work with. Now, before we get started, I want to show you that this, uh, these here are just input boxes and we don't really run into a formula uh, until we hit the loan payment. You can see that's just the equals payment function and I'm referencing uh, the amounts that are here. So if you ever need any help with that, you can just always click the function box. It'll pull up the function arguments for you and you can see exactly what's being referenced. This isn't too tough to figure out. Um, just takes a little bit of organization. So again, when we're working with a mortgage or a loan, uh, car loan, something like that, there's typically not a future value that throws people off. Those future values are really there for um, bonds or annuities, those types of instruments. So let's get started. For this case, we have a loan amount of $500,000, okay? So this is going to be a $500,000 loan. We'll just say we're going to purchase a business with this $500,000. The interest rate, as you can see over in our loan data, is 5%. And it's going to be a 30-year term. What this tells us is that this payment amount is going to be $32,525. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, again, you see it's in red, and, and Excel really does a pretty good job of tracking cash flow. So what this means is this $500,000 is positive because that's a cash inflow to us. We're going to use that to buy the business. However, in this case, uh, each of our payments is going to be a cash outflow from our business of $32,000. So what we have is a beginning balance. And just let me highlight these. This will just reference the loan amount that's going to be there. Next, we have the payment. So again, I'm just referencing what we've calculated up here in cell C6. Um, something I've done here to help with this is I've got six. Uh, I've converted that to a, a, a positive number. So it's a negative, and I've converted it to a positive number. So you can do this and actually have to do this because if, it's a, if this is a negative, the math won't work out. So even though it's a cash outflow here, we can show our payment as a positive number here. Not hard to do. I've done it one way. You can also just put the negative in front of it. Uh, always timesing it by negative one helps too. So what we have then is the interest, okay? So this interest as you know, the simple interest formula is just our beginning balance times the interest rate. So in this case, we have $500,000 and our annual interest rate is 5%. So the interest due at this period is $25,000. What happens with the leftover? We here have our $32,000 minus our $25,000 in interest is going to give us a principal reduction of 7,500 and some change. So our ending balance here then after that payment is the 500,000 minus the amount that went to principal. Now, if you watch the ending balance for the first period is the beginning balance for the second period. Same thing happens again, okay? So here's our payment amount. This is gonna be the same the whole way through. You can see I've made an absolute reference up there too, by the way, if you're gonna drag and drop these, make sure you do that absolute reference on cell C6. Your interest paid, again, is the absolute reference to the annual interest rate and the reference to the beginning balance for that year. So last time, we had to pay $25,000 in interest because we had a $500,000 balance. This time, we only got to pay twenty four six dollars because our balance dropped to $400,092. Again, our payment minus our interest tells us what goes to principal. And then we have our beginning balance. So this isn't too tough to set up. Let me show you. I mean, all you really have to do is to look at these 
formulas. You can kind of recreate this. Uh, there are probably other templates out there, but recreating this one's a, a good way to go about it. Just to show you again up in my formula bar what references I've made. Um, this is really convenient to drag and drop. You Once you have that second line built, you can just highlight this, and it has to be the second line, not the first. And it'll fill it all in for you. You could pull that all the way down, like I said, as far as you want to go. Now, here's what gets people, okay? So what we have, though, here is annual data. So let's say that we're going to have this loan data here. However, we're going to have monthly payments. What in the world do we do then? Leave this the way it is. The amount that we're going to borrow will stay the same. However, if we have a 5% APR and we are going to make monthly payments, we need to divide that 5% APR by 12 because 12 months in a year. That'll give us our per period interest rate of just about half a percent. Our loan term is going to change from 30 years to, you guessed it, 360 years. The reason being, or sorry, 30 years times 12 for 360 years. The reason being there are now 30 years of 12 monthly, 12 month periods that we have. So we again, take our pay or our rate, annual rate divide by 12 to get a monthly rate. We take our number of years times 12 to get monthly periods. And you can see our payment now. So our monthly payment on a 30 year loan, of $500,000 at 5% APR is 2,684. And as you can see, this works out everything for you. And uh, again, you have the standardization schedule. You can drag and drop that second line and pull it down as far as you want. We could actually do this all the way uh, to the 360th payment to see where we've paid off the loan. Again, this is a lot. Watch this once and uh, then go back, try to maybe work with some of these formulas, try to rebuild your own. I'm going to give you one more look. Just check out the formula bar so you can see the different um, formulas that I've, that I've used, and uh, you can see how I've created this. So again, these are just references, reference to here, making it positive. This is your simple interest formula of your outstanding balance or beginning balance times the interest rate in cell C9. This, simply your total payment minus the interest paid. And then the ending balance is our beginning balance minus our reduction of principal or principal paid. Gives us our ending balance. And this carries over to be the beginning balance of the next year. I hope this was helpful. I'll be, I'll be co posting these videos frequently, try to go over some of these concepts for you. So please uh, like, subscribe, share, leave me a comment. If there's ever a video or a concept that you want me to cover, please leave it down in the comments and I will uh, try to get that for you. So again, share this if it was helpful and uh, thanks for checking in Finance Course Guru.